Hello everyone, it's Coach Maggie, and welcome to week nine of my book, God's Design for Your Health and Wellness. And so I'm glad that you're here. We're going to be talking about sleep. So before we do, let's say a quick prayer. Lord God, we thank you. We thank you for a new day. We thank you that we woke up this morning. And I just pray that you would guide us through this time that we get into your word and learn godly principles of how we can apply these things so that we can live more productive and, and wonderful lives, being a blessing to everyone around us. So I pray that each person that is listening live or on the recording will hear directly from you through me. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so let's dive in. We're talking about sleep. And again, this may seem like, how does this have to do with anything? What does the Bible say about sleep? But trust me, it does. And really, I heard someone just recently say, there are answers for every issue in life that are rooted in something in scripture. Now, you may not find the exact thing, but there's guidance and direction that you can find that will lead you to whatever you're facing. All right, so as we talk about sleep, it's something that obviously we all have to do, but yet it is something that we really, really, really struggle with. And I'm gonna go on here and see if I can check and make sure and see if anyone leaves me a comment. But sleep is definitely critical, but it's something that is lacking and we often struggle. And I heard something a while back saying that often when kids struggle with sleep as a child, they may very well struggle as an adult, and I didn't realize that. And so it's definitely with your kids, with um, your grandkids, make that a priority if you know that they really struggle. All right, so I'll be um, checking there periodically. All right, so one of the things, and I'm going to be talking about some expressions that we often hear, but we talk about getting our beauty sleep. And you may think, oh, how does that connect? But a lack of sleep is a leading cause of premature aging. And of course, we know what that looks like. Aren't there times that you have maybe had a hard night or you were up late for whatever reasons? Often we wake up the next morning and what do we have? We have bags under our eyes. We're just sort of dragging. And so sleep is very restorative. So if we're not restoring our body, then there's a good chance we are aging faster than we actually want to, okay? And the thing is, when our sleep is disrupted, as we'll talk about, it leads to a chain reaction of other problems. That's a time during sleep that our body is eliminating and getting rid of the toxins, the smells, you know, the smoke, the foods maybe that we shouldn't have eaten, the toxins in the water, all of those things. So let's dive in. Another thing that we often hear is people will say, and I'm sure I've said it, I'll sleep on it. Sleep is a time for us to, when we are consciously asleep, it's like a factory. The lights are off, you drive by at night, and you think no one's there. But in fact, there is a crew, maybe in the basement, maybe on the first floor, they are working, <clears throat> excuse me, they're working all night while the rest of the employees are home in bed. And that's how our body is. And it's removing the toxins. That's during the night is when our body and our mind is able to process things. It's taking the issues that happened the day before and it's figuring out those things. It's thinking, okay, how can we solve this problem? You go to bed thinking about an issue that you have to face the next day, and chances are you wake up, and your mind maybe is a little bit further on. Maybe because your brain is looking for solutions, sort of dissecting things. So, And that's why a lot of times people will talk about their dreams. Haven't your dreams often been about things during the day that you were thinking. And of course, my dreams are always so bizarre. And I'll have people that aren't even connected, but they will often center around 
something that was on my mind. So again, we have to make sure that we're thinking about these things. Sleep also affects our creativity. So when we tend to say, I'm stuck, I'm not very creative, maybe that's one of the reasons. So let's dive in. So let's look at Proverbs chapter 3, verse 24, and I'm going to read, it's just one verse. It says, when you lie down, do not be afraid. Yes, you will lie down and your sleep will be sweet. God wants our sleep to be sweet. Chances are with a child, maybe, or your spouse, when people, or, or maybe your spouse says it to you, well, you were tossing and turning. That is not sweet sleep. We need to be moving and making sure. Oh, hold on. Okay. We need to make sure that we are getting that sleep so that our bodies are restful, not stirring. You even hear of people say, you know, my husband or my wife was punching me or they grabbed me it's because a lot was going on in their mind and it wasn't supposed to be. Okay. So we want that sweet, sweet rest. Now, one of the things that is a big factor and prevents good sleep, uh, Psalms 55, 22 says that we need to cast our burdens and concerns and our worries on the Lord. Too often we go to sleep and our mind is swirling with all the different things. And so because of that, we don't have that restful sleep. So what are the things that tend to keep you up at night? What are things that you find yourself thinking about, worrying about? That definitely affects sleep. We have to let those things go. And it isn't always easy. We'll talk about that later on. On day two, I talked about sleep and the emotional health. Okay? Because again, if we're not getting good sleep, it's going to affect the next day. Do you find yourself irritable in the morning? You're sort of crabby. You almost feel depressed. You don't have any motivation. You really don't want to get up. And a lot of times this happens, you haven't even put your feet on the floor and you're already feeling these things. Chances are you didn't get that restorative sleep. And it's like your body is telling you, I don't want to get up. I didn't get what I was supposed to get. Because the things that are supposed to happen while we are laying horizontally weren't happening. And now we feel like we're behind the eight ball. So let's look at a number of things that can affect your sleep. And this is important. So I'm going to read through because I know some of you don't have the book. The meal the night before. Think about it. We know there are some obvious things, but whether it's that glass of wine late at night. You thought it was going to help you go to sleep. And maybe it seemed like it did, but you didn't get that good restful sleep. Maybe it was that heavy, greasy meal. That's a huge one. That's a bad combination. Eating fried things, drinking, regardless of what you're drinking, and then going to bed and your body is trying to figure out what to do with this and process all this greasy stuff, okay? Going to bed with too much on your brain. We talked about that. We call that monkey brain. You know how a monkey goes from tree to tree to tree or limb to limb? It's your mind thinking about the economy, about your job, about a lack of a job, about your finances, about your kids, your grandkids, the state of our world, the election, whatever. It's monkey brain, and you're going from one thing to the next. That affects your sleep. So you're going to bed with too many things on your mind. Waking up during the night affects your sleep. There have been nights, and, and this is an area I can definitely relate to because for years, for years, this was an area I struggled with. And so there were times when I could get up and go to the bathroom and go to the bathroom, go back to bed, and boom, hardly even know I went. And there were other times that I went, got back in bed, and I just laid there. And then it was a few years ago I heard a woman say, 
that our bladders are large enough and have the capacity to hold. Now, if we totally overdid it the night before drinking too much water, absolutely. But we should be able to get through the night. It's a lot of other things going on. And that's when I got to really diving in and thinking about it. Because I had gotten to where, okay, I can't drink after 7. Oh, that didn't work. I still got up. I can't drink after 6. And pretty soon I was cutting it off. And then I wasn't getting enough water. And the more I did some investigating, I realized, okay, that's true. The bladder can hold. I can now have something later in the evening. Now, again, I don't try to have a lot, but I like to have an herbal tea after dinner. And so I can and sleep through the night. Now, the next morning, you bet, first thing is going to the bathroom. But I can sleep through the night. Okay? Going to bed angry or stressed. This is big. Boy, this is an area we really, really, really need to watch. Again, it gets the mind reeling and we can't rest. All right, another is struggling with digestive issues. And again, this is one that a lot of people may not think about. But when you have acid rate flux, when you've got, you struggle with these different things, you've got the heartburn, you've got the stomach cramps, when you have all of these things going on, then it is going to affect your sleep. A lot of the things, the filtering that the liver does, the cleaning out, the removing the toxins, the helping things go through the channels to go out the back door the next morning, they're happening between one and three or four in the morning. So when you're waking up, and that's when I was, I didn't know I had some early stages of some liver, gallbladder, and kidney issues. And I didn't know it. Looked perfectly healthy on the outside, eating a good diet, but I had those things going on. So that's another time that we, we need to be taking care of those areas. So the Bible says that God watches over us 24-7. He neither slumbers nor sleeps. And so we need to, as much and as difficult as, as it can be, allow ourselves to let him take care of those things. Do our part for sure. And then allow him to take care of them. When we go to bed carrying these burdens, it's going to affect our sleep. And a lot of times it's it's that that vicious cycle that happens because on one hand, if we could get better sleep, it could start to heal our body. Okay? But if we could start to heal our body, we could get better sleep. So it's like at some point we've got to say, wait a minute, let me slip in some of the things I can to start changing things. Um, Psalms 127.2 says, and it's sort of an ironic one, it says it's useless to get up early, stay up late. And it's like, wait a minute, I thought we were supposed to get up early. The Bible talks tons about getting up early. Jesus got early up early to pray and spend time with his father. But it's the idea if we're, and you have to keep going, if we're solely doing it, because again, we're trying to take care of everything. We're trying to fix everything. We're fixing everybody else's life. If we're getting up early because we got to handle all these things. And I was doing that. I was, I had retired, but I was subbing a lot at the school. A lot of teachers retired the same year I did, and so they needed subs, so I was doing that. I was trying to get my coaching business off the ground, and I was coaching individuals and doing all kinds of things, and I was wearing myself out. I wasn't taking care of me. And so when you are thinking, your mind is going, so you're getting up early to do these things, and then you're staying up late because you're worrying about these things, it's useless. Now, getting up early is good, but when we're trying to take handle all of the things, that's when it's saying it's not going to work. Now, this is on day three. It says, a Carnegie Mellon study found that when you get less than seven, seven hours of sleep at night, you're three times more likely to catch a cold as the person who gets at least eight. Now, 
A lot of you are going, I don't ever get eight. But if you can be striving towards that, that should be the goal. Now, understand there isn't necessarily, eight is the optimum. And I know a lot of times people say, well, it's not for everybody. And that can be true. I know that when I'm eating less meat, periods that I've gone through where I ate more vegan, not totally, but more along those lines, I didn't seem to need as much sleep. It takes a lot more time and energy to digest animal products. So when you're eating meat, you just need that, you know, the crew has to work longer hours. For a time I was doing a lot of raw food. I definitely didn't seem to, because again, the body didn't seem to need it. So the eight is sort of an average, but definitely when we start slipping way below where our body should be, that's when we can get into those zones or we're more likely to catch things, to get sick, to have these other issues. A deficiency in sleep can affect you by high blood pressure, obesity, diabetes, sleep apnea, uh, depression, a lot of emotional uh, anxiety, those types of things, heart disease, and even premature death. These are some pretty serious things. You know, we can maybe joke when we say, yeah, you know, my bags are under my eyes are showing, or the lack of sleep is causing this or that. I'm a little irritable this morning. But these are some serious, life-threatening diseases. And that many times, many believe these are chronic things that really could be prevented. Okay? So, so let's dive in a little bit more. Uh, there's a story in Acts where Peter has been arrested. Jesus has already died. The Christian movement is building momentum. And Peter is not the Peter that we knew when Jesus was alive. He is powerful. He's preaching the gospel unashamedly. And he's arrested and he's put in prison. And they are killing um, Christians because the Jews are happy when they do. And he is in a prison cell. I've not been in a prison cell, but I don't imagine it's one like our modern day. And not only is he in a prison cell, he is chained to two guards. And yet the Bible says that he slept. He slept peacefully. And an angel came and woke him up and took him out of the prison. And he thought he was in a trance. But yet he was able to sleep. That is a supernatural sleep. But... If you go further into the story, he had an across town, a room full of people that were praying for him. Here is more evidence of why we need to be in that community with other believers. So often, not necessarily sleep, not necessarily being in prison, we are dealing with things that we should not be dealing with alone. And God is saying, get into community, get involved, get into um, a connection with friends that you can share, that you can be open with, that they can pour into your life, you can pour into theirs. And Peter had that, and so they were praying for him. All right, let's keep moving. Day four, we're going to swing the pendulum. We talked about the importance of sleep. But did you know you can actually get too much sleep? There are problems related to that. It can become where you are trying to shut the world out. And it can become a mechanism where you just want to basically isolate yourself. You don't want to deal with the problems that are in front of you. And so it becomes this thing that you fall into. It's like pulling the covers over your head. I don't want to sleep. I don't want to deal with my problems. So there's definitely a danger there. And then you get to the place where you're not getting things done. You're not taking care of the responsibilities. And so sometimes it's a case of seeking out help. Sometimes you hear of mothers 
with young children and there are accidents and things start to happen because mom was in bed because mom was going through depression and so I'm not saying this in any any kind of judgment at all but if you know someone and they're in that place you need to consider talking to someone and possibly getting professional help there is no shame in that whatsoever there are a lot of reasons that our body can start to go in that direction. It can be a chemical thing. It can be some of the foods. A lot of times our diet can lead to that. A lot, a lot, a lot of times, and I'm sure you can attest to this watching TV, a lot of times it can be medications you're on. Don't we see commercials that shows this person, you know, with all these problems? And then miraculously, they start taking this medication that's advertised. And they're lively, and they're fun, and they're laughing, and life looks great. But then there's this little voice that speeds through all the negatives of taking that medication. And often depression, anxiety, and even suicide are sometimes the results of taking that drug. So that is huge. So make sure... If you are really, really, really struggling here, ask, are there some things, are, are you on some medications that could be affecting you? Maybe no one said, no one told you that this was a side effect, because often it is. Are you eating some foods that, you know, tend to totally mess you up? And so you don't get that restorative sleep. And so then when the morning comes, you don't want to see morning. You want to just pull the covers over your head. So do you see how everything affects everything else? We can't isolate. We're so used to isolating things. But everything is interconnected. So getting too much sleep can lead to laziness. It can lead to so many other things. You're not planning. You get fired because you can't get up and go to work. There may be other reasons. And another thing that happens is often there's a guilt associated with these issues. So if you are depressed, if you are dealing with anxiety, there's a level of guilt because you're looking around at all your other friends and life seems fine for them. People are telling you, well, just pray more. And I'm a huge advocate of prayer and believe in it wholeheartedly. And again, being in community. But again, we need to be looking at all of the things because sometimes the answer is closer than we realize. And sometimes it's a lot more complicated than we know. And there's a lot of different layers. And that's when maybe we do need to seek out, whether it's help from uh, a spiritual leader or it's professional help. So definitely look into that. And then the last day is, I want to read a little something. Michael Hyatt is a productivity expert. He's also a Christian, a business leader, and I have followed him for a number of years. He has a podcast on how to work not harder, but smarter. But he feels that getting the correct amount of sleep each night is the secret weapon to living a successful life. He says that you will soar in your career, get more done each day, be smarter, improve your health, and improve how you look, and be an overall better person by getting enough sleep. That's a mouthful. That's a big promise. But I believe it's true. Now, years ago, I would have said, mm, maybe, maybe not. But I really definitely believe it's true. I want to read Psalms 5, or just a little bit of it. It talks about the importance of starting your day meditating. And we have, unfortunately, especially Christians in the Christian community, been a little, uh-uh, when we hear the word meditation. Because we all think we have to, however you do that, you have to sit with your your feet crossed, and you have to hum, and it's this new agey thing. But the Bible clearly talks about meditating, and it's saying, give ear. He's, it's a prayer to God. 
It's like, God, listen to me. Consider my meditation. There's the word in black and white in my Bible. Consider my meditation. Listen to the voice of my cry. So a meditation is giving what's coming out, what's in here that needs to come out. It's giving it to God. And it says, in the morning, I will direct it to you. So again, another reference to in the morning, starting the day, you will hear my voice, oh God, it says. So we need to start there, directing our prayers to God, not getting on the phone and complaining to the world, not for many, many people. They barely are out of bed and they have their phone and they're scrolling. And so that's what gets their first few seconds of the day. That's what gets their meditation instead of God. And so maybe you know, I've got so much going on today. He should be the first person to hear that. So giving him and expecting him to answer. We often, and then let me read uh, Psalms 92, one and two. And again, it says, it is good to give thanks to the Lord and to sing praises to your name, O Most High, to declare your loving kindness in the morning and your faithfulness every night. And I often encourage people, have that gratitude journal, even if it's on your calendar. What are a few things? A lot of Christian as well as secular calendars that you can buy are now even recognizing the, the overall benefits to gratitude. So you can just pick up a, a journal, a basic journal in Walmart, and they'll say, gratitude, what are you grateful for today? We start with thanks. It is good to give thanks to the Lord. And then at night, let him know, what are you thankful for? And maybe a lot went wrong, but you know what? Chances are a lot went right, but we tend to dwell on what went, went wrong. And so those are things that we have to take into consideration. Uh, and this Michael Hyatt, he has planners out there and to help you be more productive. But when we can start our day, and the fact is, we're going to have uh, trouble starting our day well if we've not had a good night's sleep. So then on the next page, I gave 16 tips for better sleep. And I'm going to go through them pretty fast. And if you don't have the book, but you really want to know more of those, please, I can take a screenshot and send it to you. Okay. First, uh, first one, it says we need to get seven to nine hours. And again, you know your body. When you're dealing with some medical issues or maybe emotional, you may need more, but only get what you need because then we can fall into that category of too much. So we have to be careful. When you wake up, the best thing to do sometimes is just get up. Now, if you're sleeping those eight, nine hours, if you've been sick, maybe even 10 hours, if you are asleep, then sleep. Your body is saying you need the sleep. But if you're laying in bed, and you could be up, now we're getting into that other area. It's time to just get up and face today. Because sometimes that's what happens. The person isn't sleeping that long. They just don't want to get up. And that's, and that's another issue. All right. Lack of sleep affects mood, leads to accidents. And I know we just had our time change. And I posted an article about that. The number of accidents goes shoots way up the Monday after the time change in the spring. And um, those are accidents, moving vehicular accidents or car accidents, accidents in the home, workplace accidents, you know, slipping and falling or rushing, you know, falling in the shower, whatever, because of missing that one hour. And it doesn't seem like one hour would make a difference, but it does, okay? It affects illness, weight gain, hormone problems. So sleep is crucial. 
it can affect your fat regulating hormones. We have hormones that are just about affecting um, just how our body regulates and metabolizes fat. So we have hormones that say, I'm hungry, I'm hungry, feed me. And they're supposed to work that once you feed them, they shut up and then the other hormone kicks in and says, I'm good, you can stop now. But because of the way we eat and a lot of the foods that we eat, the one that says, I'm hungry, I'm hungry, is like a broken record. And you're full, but it's still saying, I'm hungry, I'm hungry. And so what do you do? You feed it and you feed it and you feed it. And it may just be nibbling type feeding it a little bit, but it's all day. Your hormones are out of whack. It can lead to brain fog and you're not thinking clearly. You're making poor decisions. And again, if it's affecting the brain, it's also affecting those hormones. So you're not being clear. You're not having making good choices. So you know you shouldn't choose the fried chicken when you go out to eat, but you choose it anyway. You know you should skip ordering that, but you do it anyway. You know you shouldn't say this thing and tell this person off because you're irritated, but you do it anyway because you're not thinking clearly. Do you see how all of this is interconnected? Uh, let's see, let's go on. During sleep is when your body clears out toxins. A lot of people, if not most people, are walking around with toxins being recirculated through your body, particularly if you're not having daily bowel movements. All that waste is being recirculated. Okay? And again, that's where the skin issue comes up. If you've got a lot of skin issues, a lot of times you're not getting a lot of those toxins out of the body. Uh, let's see, caffeine can disrupt sleep. We know that. But again, caffeine, alcohol can affect sleep. Eating the wrong foods. We should stop eating three or four hours before bed. Huge but we get used to snacking. And particularly if you're watching TV, because what are they showing? All these commercials where they're out to eat, they're drinking, they're doing whatever. And so commercial comes, we don't want to watch the commercial, but we run in and grab a snack. We need to power down those electronics. That's a huge one. So many people have TVs in their bedrooms. Most people have their phone by their nightstand. So the EMFs, that affects. Okay, a lot of people have their desk in their bedroom. We need a calm bedroom. We need to do a bedroom makeover so that our mind can be relaxed. Our conscious mind seems to ignore it because we see it all the time. But our subconscious mind is going, oh my goodness, you know, that desk is a mess. You've got all this over there, you've got clothes over here. And so again, it keeps us from having that restful sleep because our brain is trying to process, when is she gonna move those clothes? When is she gonna put that away? When is she gonna get rid of that stuff on the desk? Your subconscious, because you've got a stack of papers, is thinking, that's right, tomorrow I've gotta to file, tomorrow I've gotta to call this place, I've gotta do this, I've gotta apply for this. And so again, a lot of this that happens is very much subconsciously. So we've got to make sure. So we need a clutter-free, calm bedroom. The temperature we need to keep cooler. A lot of times if I wake up during the night, it's because it's too hot. Or it can be too cold. But typically it's maybe too warm, especially in the changing of the seasons. Because last night I woke up because we still have the heat on, because we've still had cold weather. And sometimes it kicks on and all of a sudden it's hot and it's like, wait a minute. Okay, so make sure you check that. Um, I like to have plants in my bedroom because they help purify the air. I would love to invest in a good air purifier in my bedroom. So that's on, the, that's on my to buy list, someday list. But plants are perfect for that. So I have lots of plants live plants, not fake plants, in your bedroom. And then uh, another thing, um, organic cotton sheets. Invest in some when you can. 
they used to be pretty expensive. I looked for years. I was always scrolling on Amazon, looking around at, you know, these different bed, bath, and beyond type places. And you just didn't see them. Or if you did, they were like $200 for a set. And now, very, very reasonably, I bought a set at Costco. Now, I know some of you don't have a Costco, but I bought a set, and they were really not much more than regular sheets. And I love my 100% uh, organic cotton flannel sheets. I love them. And actually, I use them a lot, even into the summer, because they're not like heavy flannel that you feel like you're wearing a flannel shirt, but they just feel wonderful. So look online. You can find them. You can find them in places. All right. Take time to wake up the same time every day. And again, this is one that I struggled with because I got up early the years that I worked, but on weekends I wanted to sleep in. But your body does better by having that set time. And I find that I love now getting up early on Saturdays because my husband still likes to sleep in on the weekend. But that's time I can come in here and I can read, I can do what I want and have my cup of tea. And I find that I enjoy that. My body just is getting up and I'm finding the benefits, so many side benefits to getting up early. It's not, I'm, yeah, I'm not having to worry about kids running around or noise or any of that, but I just am enjoying that time. Um, the other thing is, once you're awake, get out of bed right away because too often you wake up. A lot of people say, oh, I just don't want to get up. And I love to sleep. They actually wake up. Most people wake up when they're really supposed to. But it's that laying in bed and then you fall back asleep. And don't we tend to wake up groggy? I did that for eons. And then I was mad at myself because I felt like I should have gotten up. So once you wake up, that's your internal clock saying, get up. you got things to do. Um, when it's time to invest in a bed, consider really do your research and try to find a bed that doesn't have all the chemicals. Most, most, I think there's just a small percentage of beds out there. And I think more and more people are aware of it. Um, but most beds are filled with so many chemicals and things, fire retardants, all of these things that are very, very harmful. So consider, start saving now so that when the time comes, you can really do some research and find that bed that's gonna give you amazing sleep, but it's not gonna be slowly killing you. And then the last thing is try to get some sunlight within 30 minutes of waking up. Stick your head out the window, uh, if you're at work and you um, go in the dark, you know, if possible, try to get outside a little bit. Maybe you can choose where your office is or you're at home, you know, sitting by a window. Maybe maybe the weather's horrible, sitting by a window that has sunlight coming in. And then I didn't have written but some foods. Um, magnesium really helps. One of the first things I do, and then I'm going to cut it off here, is... I take magnesium supplements. I take one in the morning and one at night. And then I take an herb and I'll put it, leave a comment, ashwagandha. Crazy, funny name, but it's an herb that is grown, I forget where, in another country. But it's been around for eons. This is nothing new. Um, modern medicine is just catching up with ancient uh, herbs and things out there. But it's readily available rather inexpensive and I take one it's called an adaptogen in other words it can help you adapt to whatever you need it's really helpful for lowering that stress lowering the cortisol so I take it at night because I don't want to be wound up and my sleep has been amazing lately since I started doing this and again so this and I talked about being able to drink water so a lot of times even as late as eight o'clock I will take my magnesium and my ashwagandha with a good amount of water. And then sometimes I will eat half of a banana. Bananas are amazing for helping with sleep as well. 
or maybe just a small handful of pumpkin seeds. Also super helpful. They've got magnesium in it. So those are natural things that you can do. And then when I wake up, I'll have my ashwagandha and my magnesium because now the ashwagandha is saying, okay, let's get going. And it sort of helps boost the cortisol because now is when you need it. You don't need to be having that cortisol going in your body when you're trying to go to sleep. But in the morning, it helps you be able to tackle those things and to be have your mind sharp and clear. That's when you want that. So consider doing your research. I'm not telling you to, I'm not a medical doctor or anything, but I have found those to be amazing tools that I use. But again, do your research. Make sure you don't have some condition where you shouldn't. Consider talking to your doctor and saying, and do your research before you even do, okay? And maybe get tested. Are your magnesium, is your iron low? A lot of these things can affect your sleep and everything else. And a lot of times, unless you specifically go into your doctor and say, test me for this, most of the time they're not. And I'm not saying this is a negative thing. I'm just saying that isn't standard practice. It's only when you come in and you say, I have this, this, and this, and then, even then sometimes they don't check those levels. And yet in my mind, those should be the things because those can explain that moodiness. When you're low in magnesium, a lot of times it's why your hair is maybe coming out, why you're so dry, why your skin is pale and, and you're having all of these things, why you can't sleep, why you're struggling you're, with all kinds of digestive issues. But if you ask and say, can you check my magnesium levels? It may be that you're low. So anyway, all of that. Another thing, and I didn't put it on here, but one last thing I just thought of speaking of magnesium, an easy way to get it is to take a nice hot bath before bed. I buy the magnesium flakes and I put that in. Another thing is I use essential oils. I have a diffuser next to my bed. Those are all amazing things. So if you have some questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to me and let me know. Let me pray, because again, this is a very serious issue. And again, it's not given a lot of attention. And so if you are struggling in any of these areas, consider your sleep. And even if you say, oh, but I sleep, is it a peaceful sleep? I know a lot of people have the Fitbits and a lot of different things. And I've heard a lot of people say, when they check, their sleep is all over the place. Now, I'm not promoting because I don't have one. I don't want one. Um, but if you're dealing with a lot of things, really start going a little deeper and thinking about, is it possible that my sleep is not restful? And if you're snoring, that's often a cue that you've got some issues going on. That's a big one in my house. My husband will say, boy, you were really snoring. And I'll be like, I don't snore. Of course, we always say that. But again, sometimes it was something I ate. And I noticed the same thing with him. Where there are times, oh my goodness, I'm ready to get up and move. And it often I can go, Ooh, you know what? We had this for dinner. Or you ate this. We went out to eat. And you ordered this. So anyway, let me stop because I can, I can just go on and on and on. So let me pray. Lord God, we thank you. I just pray for anyone listening to this. Maybe... You've been struggling with sleep and you know it's a problem. Maybe your mate, your children, whoever, you know someone that really has a hard time with sleep. I pray that you will take this information, help them to take it to heart. But most of all, help us to realize that you are also the answer, that we can go to you. We can give you those worries, those cares. So Lord, we thank you and love you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so come back next week. Let's see. We're talking about career and leaving, um, living your dream career, or you're living your dream. Sorry, chapter 10 is career and living your dream. That's it. And uh, this was a fun 
lesson when I wrote it. And so come back again. The Bible has a lot to say. So um, invite someone to this group if you haven't. And again, these are all posted in on my Facebook page. And last week I did put a link to that Facebook page and then you'll be able to go back, listen to all of them. And when you're in Facebook and you find them, go ahead and share them, like them first, cause that helps. Uh, make a comment and then go ahead and share it with someone. So anyway, take care and God bless.